Okay, just a little review, uh, reading measuring devices. If there are no moving parts, you must estimate one decimal place past the smallest unit marking on the device. So you'll notice in the graduated cylinder example, it is marked in the one milliliter, so one decimal place passes the tenths. Okay, notice there's 40, 41, 42, and it goes up to the 43. Reading at the bottom of the meniscus should be 43.0. You might put 42.9. That's fine, but you need one decimal place. Okay, for the length of that segment using the ruler, same type of thing. Okay, notice that it's marked in tenths of centimeters. That's, uh, therefore, you must estimate to the hundredths. There's 6.5, 6.6, 6.7. It looks like it goes just a little past 6.8. 6.81 centimeters. Okay, accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close a measurement is to its accepted or its true value, so how close you are to the target. Precision means repeatability. It's something you can do time and time and again and get the same results. So in example A, 99 out of 100 shots are made. That person is both accurate and precise. Uh, B, 99 out of the 100 shots hit the front of the rim and bounce off. That means they were precise, they were repeatable, but it wasn't the desired result. So they weren't a very accurate shooter, but they were precise. And then C, 33 out of 100 shots are made, the rest miss. Um, that's really neither accurate nor precise. You know, they really didn't hit the target like they were expecting to, and they, it, it wasn't repeatable. It doesn't tell you that they all hit in the exact same spot. So I would say neither. This is just a rough sketch showing the solubility of solid salts uh, as temperature increases. So you'll notice that solids, their solubility increases with increased temperature. Okay, this is a graph that shows the solubility of gases with increased temperature. You'll notice that the solubility of gases goes down. So as temperature increases, they can help less dissolve gases. Which one of these solutes is least soluble in water at 20 degrees Celsius? So here's 20 degrees Celsius. Which one's the lowest one? It's going to be that cerium sulfate. Okay, here's another one. So it says at 70 degrees Celsius, you have 30 grams of potassium chloride dissolved in 100 grams of water. So here's 70 degrees Celsius. You follow it up to the potassium chloride. There's where it intersects. It looks like it should be able to hold 50, but you only have 30 in it. That solution is unsaturated. It can dissolve more. Okay, we're going to use that same solution from the previous problem where it said add 30 grams of potassium chloride. So if you cool it down to 60, so here's 60 and here's 30, how much more do you need to get up to the saturated portion? You could dissolve about 15 more grams of potassium chloride. Which compound is not a salt? It's got to be this one. Why? It's the only one that has a negative slope. All the other ones, the solubility increases with temperature. Okay, this problem is a proportion, and so if you look, okay, here's calcium chloride, and at 15 degrees Celsius, which is right around in here, it looks like it'll dissolve 70. So that tells me you have 70 grams of CaCl2 in 100 grams of water, according to the graph. And it wants to know how much you could dissolve in 150 grams of water. This was water. This is a proportion. How do I solve for it? Multiply both sides by 150 grams of water. What's going to happen? Grams of water are going to cancel. You take 150 times 70 divided by 100 and you get 105 grams. Okay, to explain this cartoon you'll notice the uh, gentleman's head there is H2O water and looks like the young lady, her head is octane. Water molecules are polar. They have positive and negative ends. Why? Oxygen and hydrogen do not share electrons equally. Um, because octane is made up of entirely carbon and hydrogen, if you compare their electronegativities, you will find that they share equally. That is completely nonpolar bonds. Like dissolves like. Polar and nonpolar do not mix. That's why water does not dissolve. Uh, oils and greases and that sort of thing. Okay, when water molecules evaporate in an open dish, the evaporated water molecules have more kinetic energy than the original water sample. Okay, molarity is nothing more than moles of solute per liter of solution, so you know the number of moles, 5.04 moles. 
and then you know 612 milliliters, so all you have to do is convert that to liters, move the decimal place three places to the left, 0.612 liters, divide, you get 8.24 molar. Okay, you have the molarity of the solution. You do not know the number of moles. You know the volume, 2.36 liters. How do you solve for moles? Multiply both sides by 2.36 liters. Cancels. You get x equals 0 0.236. This is moles. Okay, because this is sodium chloride, I know that one mole of sodium chloride has a mass of 58.44 grams. Moles cancel. I multiply and you get 13.8 grams. This problem is a uh, dilution problem, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the initial molarity, 2.45 molar, times the volume, which is 55 milliliters. Well, I know that the final molarity is unknown, but the final volume is 168 milliliters. Okay, if I divide both sides by 168 mils, they go away, milliliters go away, multiply and divide, you get 80 or 0.802 molar.